a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come, take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Praise God. I want to preach from this thought tonight. It's time to pour out. It's time to pour out. Let's just ask him to help us, Lord. I want you to speak to your body tonight. This is the body of Christ. And God, I know that everyone is a member in particular. And you have a way of speaking to every one of us, God, at one time. And I ask you to speak to every heart, move on every life. Let something transform in Jesus' name. God bless you. Give him another hand clap of praise. And you may be seated. Thank God. You know, church, there's no time to be uh, holding back anything. It's really time to, to give it all that we've got. It's time to just pour out. Now, there are to be um, a miracle outpouring. There has to be some preparation. It doesn't just happen. There has to be something done to bring it to pass. Empty vessels have to be gathered together before there can be a, a, a miracle. And so... We have to make preparation if we want to see God do a miracle. And so uh, this Bible story is about a lady that was a little widow woman. Uh, Josephus, the Jewish historian, says this was not just any uh, widow woman, but the Bible says a certain woman. Thank God. But he says that this certain woman was the wife of Obadiah. He was the one that um, when Ahab was trying to kill all the prophets, hid a thousand prophets away, fed them every day, took care of them. And um, so he was a very special man, but he dies. And when he dies, of course, um, when he was alive, he was Ahab's right-hand man. Ahab had no idea that the man that he leaned on and depended on was behind his back taking care of these prophets that he was trying to kill. And so um, she was blessed. She lived in luxury. She lived with anything that she wanted to have. But when her husband died, all of that was gone. And she finds herself in distress. She finds herself not able to pay her bills. And because of that, the creditors were coming and they were going to take her sons away because in those days when you couldn't pay your bills, it was just a, a way that uh, the creditors had a right to your children that they would have to become a uh, bondsman unto them and work the debt off until the debt would be paid. And so that was the setup. And so all of her social friends had gone, but she remembered there was one friend that she still had, and that was the man of God. And so she pulled up to his little shack where he lived. He didn't live elaborately. He just lived in a very modest way. You'd wonder, well, what could he do for such a woman in such distress? But she knew that he had a God that could take care of her problem. And so she brought her need to him. And so in a desperation, she comes to the man of God asking for help. And in verse number two, um, he extends hope to her. Elisha said unto um, her, what shall I do for thee? And so there is the question of just saying, what do you want me to do? Tell me what hast thou in thy house? And she said, thy handmaiden has not anything in her house. She said, I don't have anything in my house. Thank God. The question was that he asked her, what do you want me to do? And then he asked her, what do you have in your house? And she thought about everything in her house, and she said, really, I don't have anything in my house save a, a, a little pot of oil. That's all that I really have. And suddenly, she didn't realize that when she said that, she was actually saying, this is what I have for God to use. It's not very much, but this is what I have that he can use. And so, uh, you know, sometimes we have to remind ourselves tonight, thank God, when God begins to want to use you, when God wants to work in your life, it doesn't matter about how much talent you have. It doesn't matter about how much money you have. It doesn't matter who is and who isn't. Thank God. There's something we forget. It's what when we got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when we got the all of the Holy Ghost in our life, you got the power to overcome. You got the power to become anything that God leads you into. There is no problem that cannot be solved with you and the Lord when you become his child. And so God has big plans for you. You are a member in particular. You didn't just happen and not have any purpose in the body. Everyone is a member in particular. Thank God. And so all you've got uh, 
maybe to understand is that uh, you need to understand God is going to use you to make a difference. The Holy Ghost is your pot of all. It's the power to be able to transform. It's the power to be able to affect things that we could never affect within ourselves, but because who is in us, he is able to use us. But you are, are right where the, the little woman was because uh, she had um, made a step of faith. She had come to the man of God. And so he said, look, all you've got to do is if you will, uh, he said, uh, go bore the vessels about uh, all of, above, 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 from all of your neighbors, every empty vessel, bore not a few. Thank God. And so the process began when she began to accept that uh, I've been a miracle has been spoken to me. All I've got to do is go bore the vessels. And he said, bore not a few. And it took faith to be able to go out and say, go get some more pots. And when her sons brought the pots in, they'd say, well, is that enough? And she'd say, no, go get some more pots. And until her, as long as her faith was saying, bring more pots, they were getting more because uh, the more you bore, the greater the miracle is going to be. And some of you need to understand the more that you have to uh, endure, the more that you have to press, the more that you have to just keep walking by faith and just keep claiming the hard things, thank God, the more that God is going to be able to do in your life, the more that you smite the ground. Don't be like the king when the prophet came and said, look, you want victory over your enemies, uh, take those arrows and smite the ground, and he only smote it three times, and so he only had three victories according to your actions. God weighs our actions more than he does our abilities and all of that. He looks at you and just says, how much are they willing to believe me for? How much are they willing to trust me for? And so when you begin to believe the Lord and trust him, and so every empty vessel was saying, my God can do that. My God can do that. And as they fill the house with all these vessels, finally uh, it came time that once they had filled the house, there were some other instructions. And those instructions was, it's when thou art come in. Thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out unto all the vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. And so the prophet said, uh, just so you have to do this by faith. Uh, ever how many vessels is in the house, that's how many vessels God's going to fill up. That's what God is going to do for you. But once you get started, ready to pour it out, Thank God, you're going to have to shut the door. Not going to be an opportunity to go back and get any more. You've got to trust that whatever you've done. And so he told them that to, to shut the door. So once the oil starts flowing, you can't get more vessels. And so she had to make preparation for the miracle to come. And so it is, that's kind of where the church is at. Sometimes we don't understand what's going on, why are we digging ditches, why are we... Uh, pressing and why are we fasting and why are we praying and why are we doing all these things? It's because we are making preparation for what God is going to do. And the more that we prepare, the greater the revival is going to be, the greater the harvest is going to be. And so I'm sure that all of the neighbors were wondering, what are they going to do with all those vessels? And maybe the kids would just say, well, you know, mom's got this little pot all over there. And she said that we're going to go borrow all these vessels. And the prophet said that um, as we get these vessels in there, she's going to start pouring our little pot out and it's going to fill up the vessels. And um, you can imagine what they all thought. Well, that sounds like a, a silly thing to be doing. And uh, so it was to be the laughing stock because if nothing happened, then it would be an amazing thing to bring all the empty vessels back. But you know, uh, her faith just said, you get the vessels and God's going to do what he said he would do. In verse number five, it says, and so she went from uh, him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels unto her. So they got the door shut. Everything's ready. But I'm telling you, the miracle did not begin until she started pouring it out. Because somewhere in there, she had to take that little one-gallon bucket, whatever it was, whatever little bit of oil she had, look at a five-gallon bucket and say, well, thank God, how could this one gallon fill up a five-gallon? But somewhere, she just had to go ahead and tilt it over. And to her amazement, it filled it up. Thank God. And she went to another one, tipped it over, it filled it up. Natural mind could not grasp that. The natural man could not understand. How can this be that this little gallon 
all bucket is filling up all of these vessels. And finally, she filled every vessel they'd got. She said, bring me another vessel. I said, Mama, there's no more vessels. Everything's full. Thank God. And it, the all flowed until, thank God, every vessel was full. And so the, the, the call to the church is to shut the door. Thank God. Just like Jesus said, when you get into that place that you can shut the door, can shut everything out, thank God, and then you just start pouring yourself out. God will begin to fill this place as the church begins to pour itself out. And somewhere, that's what the call is to the church. And that's what the burden of the church is. you got to get poured out. Somewhere, if you want things to happen in your life, if you want your family to be changed, if you want uh, the kingdom of God to grow, somewhere, somebody has got to begin to pour themselves out. It is his will that the house is full. There is no question that God wants his house to be filled, but we have to bring the empty vessels. We are the ones that are a responsible for getting them here. And then all we have to do is begin to pour ourselves out. He can fill them if we will bring them, but we are always praying to be filled. But really and truly, what Jesus uh, taught us is that it's not about you getting full, it's about you getting empty. And Jesus is constantly emptying himself. Everywhere he went, he was giving out. He was giving out. He didn't come to be ministered to, but he came to minister. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. And somewhere we have to get that servant mentality that, God, I'm not here to, for people to do for me. I'm here to do for the kingdom of God. And so when Jesus came, he emptied himself. Everywhere he went, thank God, he was pouring himself out. And, of course, the ultimate outpouring was at Calvary when he poured out his precious, soul-cleansing, life-giving blood. And that is why we are able to sing, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So what uh, amazing love that he showed to us. And so that is why that today we can say, whosoever will can come because he paid the price. Now, the only way to get more is to empty yourself out. If you want more of God, you're going to have to empty out what you have and so that God can give you more. If you will give, God will always give you more back. You're never going to outgive God. You're never going to put so much into the kingdom of God that you don't have anything left. Thank God, we need uh, some modern day Hannahs that won't go home until they have heard an answer from God, until they have touched his throne. And again, we can't help but just say how much we appreciate when the people of God begin to come together in prayer, because everything starts in prayer. Everything needs to be birthed in prayer. Whatever ministry, whatever vision, whatever burden you have, it needs to be birthed in prayer. God has set the stage and or this end time revival, we don't have to wonder, will it happen? God's already set the stage. It's already been prophesied in his word. And so we just need to step into what God is wanting to do. But we got to pour ourselves out. It's got to be a time where we just get poured out and we've got to step up to the plate and make a difference. God, I want my life to make a difference. I don't want to just mark time. I don't want to just try to hold on. I want to be running with everything that I've got when the race is finished, when the kingdom is come, and when his will has been done. And so it is tonight while you sit here in this place that God is just trying to remind us that we're, we're the ones that's going to make the difference. Nobody can do this for us. We are the church of the living God, and we are the body of Christ. And so it's time to break out uh, the alabaster boxes. It's time to take those precious things that we have and just begin to pour it out to him. Whatever it is that you could just pour out to him as an offering, an alabaster, your alabaster box. It's time to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. While we're standing, this is no time to be uh, letting our, our promises die. Some of us, if we're not careful, we will let the promises that God has given us begin to just think, well, it's never going to happen. I thought he was going to save this one. I thought he was going to do that. But I'm telling you, I have lived long enough. Thank God. And I have been able to see the kingdom of God come enough time to just know that there is never going to be a time that God is going to be late. Thank God. God is more than ready to give us great things. God is more than ready to do above and beyond what we can ask or think. And so if this is no time to be letting 
up on your promises. Don't let those promises die. God is going to do what he promised he would do. He will fulfill. He will bring it to pass. It will be done. Thank God it's time to have a, 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 you know, a resurrection of our hope and our expectations. God, that I want to keep my hopes and my expectations high. God is more than ready to give us a Holy Ghost downpour. I feel that downpour is just so near, and some of you just need to step on into it. Some of you have begun to step into it. God is more than ready to give you a greater touch, a greater move, and so it's pouring out time. And God, somewhere, every one of us has got that all that God is just saying, if you'll pour it out, Thank God, I'll give you a miracle. If you'll pour it out, I'll fill the vessels. But somewhere, you're the only one that can pour it out. Somewhere, you've got to just get to that place. That God, I'm just going to get poured out to you. Thank God, if you will take a stand for God, God will come through for you like no other. God is ready to open the windows of heaven. God is ready to pour out untold blessings on us today. And I'm just hungry. Thank God, I'm looking forward. I'm so glad for what women's conference did last year, what men's conference did last year, what um, youth congress did for our youth last year. So many wonderful things, but I'm telling you, there's an expectation that this year will be even greater. Thank God. Greater women's conference, greater men's conference. God will do greater things this year. And so somewhere we need our expectations just to know that it's not the end, but it's the beginning. God is beginning something great. There is a good work. God has begun, and he will finish that good work that he's begun. God bless you. Let's just reach out to him. Let's just sing a chorus and kind of.